Suso, tira Alessio, Suso, tira, perché non tiriamo? Ma perché non tiriamo? Gol! Alessio Romagnoli, gol! Alessio Romagnoli! Actually, Shannon knows she, she might buy some. Honestly, it'd be a, it's, it's going to be a sick concert. Like, I mean, I don't performer. hate Justin Bieber, but... I fully understand why it's not many grown men's like choice in music. You don't have to convince it's, me that why. <laughs> it's like catchy music, you know, but... Yeah. It's not as like teeny bopper as it used to be. It, it's no. It's definitely an adult now, but I still I understand. Um, all right, give it five seconds. What's up, guys? Um, we're joining for a no. We're not gonna do that. We're we're just gonna do that. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, so nonchalant. Yeah, no, we're Breaking we're gonna do podcast. the Robot the regular fired. intro. <laughs> Uh, all right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Sempre Milan podcast. I'm going to be your host this week, Anthony Torgrud. Um, as you can see, Ollie Fisher, he's not with us. He took a vacation, was in Barca this weekend. Um, so hopefully he's having fun, and we'll see him next week. But for now, follow me on Twitter, at Torgrud45. We also got Madison with us. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if Oliver's going to be with us next week either. I think he might be in quarantine. I think the... Uh... English government may have put him in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. There's a, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's some stuff going on in the world right now, and you guys it's making can, travel difficult. <laughs> yeah, guys, can uh, go ahead and follow me at Madison underscore DT. Yeah. So this week is going to be a little different. Um, I'm sure everyone's probably already noticed the video length is significantly shorter than it typically is. Um, that's because we originally didn't plan on having one this week. Because the game was postponed and canceled, we were just going to kind of do a little blooper highlight reel, which is still going to be in this episode at the end of it. Um, just kind of showing some outtakes from previous podcasts, something fun for you guys to watch. But given the events that took place today with the dismissal of Bobin, uh, we figured it'd be important to kind of discuss the, the club a little bit in its current state. Some interesting stuff's going on. Um, our guy Vito Angeli has mentioned a lot of interesting things happening. Obviously, the big one being Bobin's dismissal. Um, but one of the many, many reasons to this breakup, so to speak, between Gazidis and Maldini at Bobin, um, they've asked Elliot for a renewal on Zlatan. There's been no response at all. Um, that's that's worrying. Do you think that's the right move? I mean, I personally think well, we need to keep Zlatan as long as he's willing to stay. He's been the turning point for our season, in my opinion. Are you asking me that question? Yes, yeah, I am. Okay, Sorry. I wasn't sure if you were just like talking in third person or not. Um, I absolutely agree. I think that not renewing him um, would also be like an insult because he wanted an 18-month deal, and we told him that if he performs, he'll get an extension. Um, and now we're just kind of stabbing him in the back, kind of like the way that Americans do business. Um, we have American ownership, so... Um, any billionaire Americans out here out here who are listening, don't invest in European soccer because you ruin it. Uh, soccer is not a business to make money, and this is exactly what Elliot's trying to do. They, sorry, go ahead. I'm no, not, I'm, yeah, I was going to make a cheeky comment. Um, any of the millionaires or billionaires that are listening, invest in Sempre Milan instead because we would like to make money. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. But continue. Go back to what you were saying. Um, I feel like we talk about this on the podcast all all the time. The people who invest in soccer, like uh, the Chelsea owner, Abramovich, or whatever his name yeah. is, he he likes to win. He they these guys are headstrong, so they like to show off what they have. What better way of showing off than own, owning the top team in London, winning the Champions League, winning the English championship, what's better, you know, owning an Italian giant like AC Milan or Inter Milan or Juve, you know? Um, but then you bring in a guy like Elliot and Gazidis, your dog just joined us, by the way. Uh, <laughs> he opened the door. Wow. Smart dog. You got there. Yeah. That was weird. Keep talking. I'll be right back. <laughs> they are, uh, they're in it for the money. And today they talked about how, uh, Gazidis wants to implement a salary cap. Salary caps don't work. Look at Tottenham Hotspur. They made it to a Champions League final, but they lost. And 
they had a salary cap, but then they've been slowly raising it because they've realized we need to keep our players. You're not going to keep Donnarumma, Romagnoli, uh, Zlata. Don- Zlata. I mean, I'm thinking about long term. Those are like yeah. our only two players who are worth keeping. By having a salary cap, R- Ranola hates Elliott management because he probably sees that exactly what we're talking about. Um, he doesn't want his players to be here already. This is just icing on the, on the cake. Uh, and nothing, I'm not going to put anything past uh, uh, Elliot. I guarantee you Donnarumma is going to be gone this summer because they're going to try and give him a lower contract. And they're going to say, if you don't sign it, you're gone. You know, uh, yeah. Romagnoli, he's going to be gone. He's going to be gone for less money than what we think he's worth because he has not performed in big games. If he if we held on to him for a couple more seasons, got him a good pair, we might be able to get more money, but that's not going to happen. And I'm going to get my AC Milan tattoo removed. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to do that just yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to hold on to mine for a little bit longer. But um, specifically, the donor rumor renewal was something that Vito mentioned, that it was suggested by Maldini and Boban, and Elliot just flat out rejected the idea. So they're... They're not at all game for renewing him, which is honestly shocking. He's our biggest asset, in my opinion. And that further leads me to believe that because this is the only investment Elliot's ever made that has lost them money, their goal right now is to sell off every big-name asset, Donnarumma, Romagnoli, um, allow Ebra to walk for free, and maybe sell some other big players, and then sell the club overall at a loss of the purchase and just try to recoup as much money as they possibly can. And I get it from a business perspective. Like you said, that's that's how American business people work. But it, there's got to be a sporting aspect here. You, we gotta, we got to find a way to win. And if youth is the way they want to go, then we should have stuck with what we were doing with Jim Paulo, losing every single game. You know, But when we switched over, when Maldini and Bowen finally broke through to him and said, we need some experience, we signed Zlatan, it, that was a turning point. Remember, they even tried to sign Spalletti, get experience there, and they tried really hard, and it came down to, like, what was it, half a million euro difference? Something small From like what that. they told us. From what they told us. Elliot yeah. could have j- just been like, no, we, do, we yeah. don't want him. You know? Yeah, I mean, he could have just said no. But, I mean, if it was just a, a salary option that they were upset about, because then they went with the cheapest option in Pioli, I mean, they're always doing everything as cheap as possible. We saw it over... Uh, the summer market when everyone we signed was really, really cheap, young, inexperienced players. And some of them turned out well. Benacer is an example of that. The majority didn't. Um, Rebic on a two-year dry loan. I mean, that's that's actually a pretty good deal in hindsight. But at the time, we're like, why would you do this at all, you know? Right. Um, and then in the, the, the winter window, every deal we made outside of Zlatan was, again, a loan with option to buy. And I, I think we're not going to redeem many if any of those options to be honest with you but it is what it, what it is you know um another thing that that Maldini and Bobin had asked for was more experienced players specifically Tiago Silva and Luka Modric Modric was never in discussion yet that was a player that they brought to the management and said yo what about this um but I guess there were talks with Tiago Silva already he's going to be a free agent so that was more doable for them um and Elliot just his cold turkey just dropped it you know they they shut down the idea of making any summer deals now. They were going to wait for everything this summer. Obviously, that now we know is because Ralph Ragnick is coming in. That's been all but confirmed by every major source. All that's really waiting is an announcement. Um, same with this Boban dismissal. Everyone has agreed he's gone, and we're just waiting for an announcement on that as well. But it's it, I'm torn. Ralph Ragnick is a footballing genius, and I don't believe that's a hyperbole. I think he really is fantastic. We've seen what he's done with the Red Bull Empire. He's he's created teams from nothing, from the ground up. The problem is it's not an instant solution. And we're talking about a team that's been on the decline for almost an entire decade now that is used to being at the top. It's not like we're, you know, RB Salzburg, who came from nothing, and it wasn't a big deal to take three or four years to get some growth. We're a team that needs immediate growth, and we're not getting that at all. But this is going to be our fourth consecutive year zero. It's going to be Donnarumma's fifth management and an eighth coach, I believe, seventh or eighth coach in his short tenure with us. I mean, 
the fact he's even developed at all is remarkable, but it's, I don't blame any players if they leave this situation at this point. Yeah. I mean, if the club's not going to be sold this, this summer, I feel like two months ago we were all on board with it. And the longer that we go without hearing anything, I think the less and less possibility of the club is being sold. And, uh, Maybe that's why they are haven't just started discussing a renewal for Donnarumma because they don't know what the next ownership wants, you know. But if you want to sell a club and get the most money for them, you need to have strong players, you know. I agree. Yeah. And selling your top players to sell the club is just the stupidest move, um, um, unless they're like, you know. We can get a hundred million for Donnarumma, forty-five million for Romagnoli, forty million for Kessier. You know. Yeah, I mean, if they're able to pull off crazy prices like that and then sell the club cheap and still get their full billion, I mean, that would be an ideal situation for them, I would think. And another thing I'm looking at is the salary cap at four million euros per player, which is already crazy, by the way, because Gazidis is on five million. A season and he's a fucking is that this they, they want it at four million per player they want it at four million a player which isn't unreasonable for Syria teams but you look at the teams that are competing for the title right now juventus has a wage bill like almost 100 million i mean granted ronaldo's 60 of that you'll get inter they're at like 60 <laughs> 70 million you know uh napoli lazio they all have high wage bills we're never we're never going to compete with these four million unless we get every single mbappe that no one's heard of yet, you know, but we're not going to, how can we just put all of our hope in this basket well, of finding the next 16 year old superstar? So what, then when they're 21 and they want a better contract, we're going to be like, sorry, bye. Yeah, no. exactly. When, when they're stars. So then we could sell them for hire because we saw what Gazidis did at Arsenal. Arsenal, we went from a team that, had their invincible season. They had world-class superstars in, in Terry Henry. They, they had all kinds of great things going. And then Gazidis comes in, and they're perpetually between fourth and sixth. They they don't compete for anything. They're not winning trophies. They don't really care. They're selling off all of their strong products. You look at Alexis Sanchez was their best player when he arrived. They sold him off to a direct rival in Manchester United. I mean, But they I had ridiculously the- high contracts. They did. They did have high contracts, but it's you know, the Premier League. They could get away with that. We can. Yeah, but what is he? Gazidis is a crook. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, the fact that he's getting ma- paid more than what he is going to allow our best players to get. I mean, really, does anyone think he's doing better for the club than Don Rumor's Latin? They're w- worth way more money than Gazidis is to this club. But back to what I was really going to say was they're getting rid of. Masara, most likely. Boven, for sure. Maldini, almost for sure. And Pioli, for sure. That's four people. I don't know what all their wages are, but you add that up, and that's all that saved wage. You're replacing all four of those with one guy in Ralph Ragnick. Surely he's not making four million a season. He's got to be on one or two and a half, maybe three, because he'll have so many roles. But, I mean... I don't. Maybe that's how they're gonna make room for like a Donnarumma renewal or something like that. Because even if you raise Donnarumma one, there's no way that that we're not still saving a little bit of money. Obviously, they don't. They're trying to save as much as possible, but just to give that little glimmer of hope, you know. Dude, I have been preaching that Donnarumma is gonna stay. I don't know how long. Even last summer, two summers ago, when. You know, I was like, guys, he's going to stay. Like, he's a fan. There's no chance he's staying now. I think he's gone. I think he's gone. gone. And and And, good for him. You know, he he deserves Champions League football, and he definitely doesn't deserve a pay cut. So if if he leaves, I don't blame him. He's put up with us for five years, and they've been the toughest years for a developing player. To put on the performances he has, he deserves any club in the world that wants him. And he arguably plays better in bigger games. I agree. And plays worse in shittier games. Yeah. So put him at a team like PSG where Real he's going to win trophies every year. Real Madrid where he could compete. Barcelona where he could compete. I, if, I had I pick, mean, if I had a pick, I'd want him to go to Bayern Munich or Real Madrid. 
how old is Neuer? Neuer's late like 30s 35. now. 35. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's not even a bad move for him at all to Bayer, be Neuer. But, he likes Bayer to be a Munich, keeper. Bayern Munich won't pay more than $40 million for a player. Well, that the problem is I don't think we would sell him for more than $40 million because he hasn't won anything, so that drives his market value down. I mean, you look at – well, never mind. I was going to say look at Keppa, who ain't shit and is still the world's best or highest paid keeper or whatever was, the highest transfer. Donnarumma is miles ahead of him, and I don't think he'll go anywhere near what Keppa went for. No. But we have a bad bargaining team behind us. We do. This team just – I mean, he's pure profit, you know? Yeah, so. that, that's true. That's true. Even if we sell him for 40, that's a pure 40 net gain. You know, that's not not like we had to pay anything to get Donnarumma. I think right. it was like half a million when for his youth rights or some something irrelevant like that. So Donnarumma will be pure profit. You figure maybe, I don't know where Roman Yuli goes. I'd imagine we could, I think we could push 30 for 40 out of 30 or 40 out of him, but he's going to go to a top club in the world. They're yeah. good, they're they're gonna see past his bad performances and big games and his low cost and they'll pick him up for sure. I know Chelsea has been interested in him heavily multiple years back to back. I mean, we as a club announced that we turned down a big money offer, so that was at least forty. Chelsea overpays for every player. If we want money for Romagnoli, send him to Chelsea. And I hate that we're even discussing where we offload all our best players to, but that's kind of the reality of where where we're at right now. Yeah, but it would. I'm surprised that we'd bring in a uh, manager, director, or whatever like Ragnick, and sell the players. Like that just doesn't give him something to work with from the beginning. Exactly. Like give him. I understand that he could create something out of very little, but why? Why use that extra year zero? You know, we already have a strong foundation. Just, just keep it. Let him build off this with Donnarumma, Romagnoli. Benesser and Zlatan for just even one more season. And and I think that could seriously be successful for us. We're just a few experienced players away from from really competing for a top four spot, I think. And it's unfortunate because I think we're going to lose the, the good spots that we currently have. Yep. Yeah. So uh, that was super depressing. That <laughs> was no fun to talk about at all but it, i mean it is what it is that, that's that's where we're at boban should never have spoken out about gazidis publicly in the way he did i fully agree with everything he said but the reality is you're mid-season you can't be causing risks like that mm-hmm. i understand why he needs to be sacked from a managerial point of view i don't want him to but it makes sense you can't openly disrespect your ceo like that even though he was being shady in the first place but it's uh, it's gonna have effect on us for the rest of the season, I think, sporting wise as well, because everyone's now disheartened. Everyone's no longer focused on the games ahead. They're focused on, can we come back from this this mess that we're now in? Um, it's, it's not cool. <laughs> it's, no. it's really not cool. I and I didn't have a problem with Boban though. You know, I have no issue with Boban. I I think he's. I mean, the only thing that Boban and Maldini have got wrong, in my opinion, was hiring Gianpaolo. And I don't even think that was entirely their doing. You know, I think there were other factors that went into his hiring because we saw who we were courting before that. Antonio Conte, Max Allegri, um, and, um, sorry, even were all people that we've tried to court last summer. And then we got Jim Paolo. So I'm yeah. just basing off of how it went when we sacked Jim Paolo and all this courting with Spalletti. And then we got uh, Pioli. It, it seems to me that Elliot's letting us flirt with all these great options to appease the fans and then real quick settling for the cheapest option. And I think that's kind of what happened with Apollo when we had an opportunity to sign big name players because we were one point off Champions League. Big coaches would have come to a club like that. They could right. they're good for one point, you know, but um oh well, enough of that. We have one game to look ahead to. I believe on Wednesday uh against Behind Juventus. Behind closed doors. If it's not I honestly have a feeling that the game's going to get canceled. I, I was kind of under that impression as well, to be honest. I, um, I think it might. Um, but regardless, we're behind closed doors, which does play into favor for us. Originally, it was just Milan fans weren't allowed to go, and Juve fans were, which was shady, but whatever. But it's at Juve. It, we have Zlatan, Teo, and Castillejo suspended for this. And 
Daniele Orsato is the referee. So there's not a chance in hell we win this game. Not a chance we do anything positive in this game. Um, but that's the game we got to look forward to. So, Do we see a possible uh, Daniel Maldini starting? Maybe. I don't know about starting. He might make an appearance, though. Cause, oh, so we, who have, do we have, we have uh, Liao and Rebic. I forgot about uh, Rebic, oddly enough. He scored in every game for the past like five weeks. I know it, it'll be a Liao up top, I think, because he hasn't played much lately. So that'll that'll be good for him. Um, and who do we think will be left back? Do we think Calabria slides over, or do we think Loxalt? Uh, I'd rather have Loxalt and Calabria on, both on the field, and Conti uh, back in Milan. Why do I feel like Conti can't play? No, he can. He can, oh, it, Castillejo can't play. So Salamakers will take over Castillejo's spot for sure. Oh. And then, right? Yeah, that, that's what we do. And then Conti, it'll either be Conti and Calabria at left back, or it'll be Calabria at right back and Loxalt at left back. It sucks, man. Our two, two of our three best. I mean, maybe Rebic starts up top, dude, and Leal on the, on the wing. I am more prone to see prone i'm expecting to see that i think that'd only be, because oh. rebich can create it liao can give it to rebich to create it i don't th- i think that liao is still too young i agree i think he had that obviously that wonder goal against fiorentina in the first leg but he hasn't really created as much whereas rebich has clearly been producing every single week mm-hmm. um, I, yeah so rebich up top and he scored against him in the reverse, so maybe, who knows? I mean, do, does Juve have any suspensions, do you know? Or any injuries or anything? I honestly have no idea. I have no Check. idea. I can look real Demi quick. Demi injured. Oh, dude, you know who else I forgot's hurt? Donnarumma. No, he'll be back. I read Will he be, be back? back? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. Um, but Juve's got Demi Ral. Demi Ral's out. But besides that, it's probably going to be the usual criminals in their lineup. Um, Douglas Costa and Iguain are both questionable. Okay, well that's. Oh, good. it says uh, according to Soccer Swap, I think that's the app I'm using. Soccer Stand, uh, Gigi Donnarumma will not be playing. Cool, glad, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> so there's that game. Um, so your ideal. Okay, let's look at it now. So we're probably going to lose. Twenty-one. He just turned twenty-one, like last week. God damn. I know, dude. Um, so in the other semifinal, Inter Napoli. Napoli's up one on aggregate. I think they have a they have a home goal, not in a way. Do you think Napoli could hold that and go to the finals? Or do you think? Uh, I think the game's they, at Napoli, right? I, I thought the, Napoli I thought, had the first one already. I thought Inter had it at home. Well, we played ours at home. Did we play on the same day? No. I'm trying to find it. Um, Shit, just dropped my phone. Sorry. I had it. Where is that? Gosh dang it. Sorry. It is Napoli at home. So they do have an away goal already. That's that's perfect then. So that's Napoli nice. could push through. At least that would stop Inter from getting potentially a trophy. Mm-hmm. If we don't make it through, I hope Napoli wins it. I hope they win it all. I don't want you. Yeah, I don't like, want that'd be great. Anything. Oh, and to have. Napoli Gattuso. take a trophy from Sari and Gattuso. Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't like Napoli, but I'd, I'd root for that. Better than Lazio. You think so? I'm rooting for Lazio to win the league. I am too because I hate Inter and Juve, but Lazio's yeah. fans are questionable characters. <laughs> I like Jerry. Jerry's a good guy. He'll be on the uh, – for those who follow us on Twitter, Jerry Mancini, he's – host another podcast he's a big Lazio fan he's going to join us for the I'm sure Jerry's a good guy but I mean like the ultras <laughs> oh yeah no 100% I, I knew what you were saying <laughs> I just plug in um well yeah that's just about it we don't have much else to cover but um thank you guys for for listening thank you for joining us on this really impromptu quick one here like I said I'm going to Roll a blooper reel after this, or an outtake reel, so to speak, of previous podcasts. It's kind of funny stuff. Um, fair warning, there is a f- 
decent amount of language in these clips. So if you don't want to hear that, then tune out. That's fine. Um, it's about six minutes. So if you're listening to this on Audio Boom, the outtakes are only available on YouTube. So definitely get on YouTube. Check it out. That said, you can follow me on Twitter at Torgard45 and Madison, you as well, sign up. Yeah, you guys can go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Madison underscore DT. Um, hopefully Oliver is back next week. Um, maybe Isaac will join us once if he can learn to speak English. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ollie actually it. said he was going to have a, a written statement for this episode because, like I said, he's I think he's way. resigning. He's resigning. Yeah, all he's yeah. done, we're getting rid of him. Um, but we still need him to write because he, out of the three of us, is the only one who does. So, that yeah. said. <laughs> Me and AJ are uh, strictly podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Snags are telling people they're being recorded. All oh, your, your video's gone off. Oh, no. Oh, it's about yeah. mind. Yeah, it should just pop up and wait for it to clear. It's weird seeing, like, just one person on the camera. Mm. It's so cool, though. I like it. Let's yeah. just see that fucking leprechaun. Um. I have to turn the lights mean. down a bit. Is the glare like less bad on my head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Yeah, your hair is like leaning over enough to where the shadow works. Need a haircut. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow now. Isaac's covering in the morning. That's good. Yeah, I got mine today. I don't know. It, look, it looks nice. Good. It looks good. It, she actually did a really good fade. She was just she like makes you fucking be a pop. Annoying. Like loads more. Uh, no, that's the makeup I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, dude. I bought a. Girls use it for their fucking eyebrows. A brow pencil. It's just like you shade it in, and then the back side of the brush or back side of the pencil is a brush to like blend oh, right. it. Yeah. And it was, it was like four bucks at the, the store down the road. So I put I'm one sure I've here. seen that like yeah. used as the thing, and they, they brand it like man sculpting or something like that. Yeah. 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 It's called a void. It's a UK yeah. pin that's like all my ads on Instagram have been it. That's what made me want to get it. But that thing's 15 pounds, and this was $4. <laughs> that's so all right. right. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. I think it looks decent. Like, it's not... Can we keep this as the podcast intro? <laughs> Holy Just... shit, I forgot we were recording. <laughs> <laughs> we ought to do an outtakes episode, and this should be, like, the first one. That would be really Hey, buddy. Funny. Yeah, yeah, he just Yo. decided to hop on Yo. in here. Oh, he no, can't... Can't... yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, look over there. Say hi to Ollie. He has no idea. Chuck, 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 <laughs> Chuck, look at the screen. His <laughs> eyes just got so wide. He was really confused. <laughs> Bless He's staring it. me down. He's like, what the fuck? All right. Well, should we just get her started then, I guess? Start, yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> not while your dog's head's down there, man. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not having to PG warning straight away. <laughs> right. Ready? <laughs> yeah, see, whenever you're ready. It's like, yeah, I, already sure I was going to jump into it, but you're both looking directly downwards, and I thought that would be the weirdest start to the pod ever. <laughs> mm. Looking really somber. Like... I was just like marking it so I knew exactly where to cut it off, you know? Huh? But yeah, good thing. That's why I didn't yeah. want to do it. Does this look dude. weird not having the lights on behind? No, I think it looks, it looks better. I mean, it looks like you're about to get murdered, but. That's well. I, I like... wouldn't be against that. <laughs> Uh, you ever seen like uh, those Twitch streamers? They get swatted and while mm-hmm. they're streaming, that shit's so funny. Also those, fucked up. Uh, all the one of them got killed. All the yeah, but is that true? Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's a real thing. Like, swear to God, I don't remember who. You could look it up. Yeah, I've seen all the prank shit about you know people ordering fucking loads of pizza to these streamers' houses and stuff, which is funny, but all right, that's started. <laughs> Do you play soccer stars? Uh, no. I play new star soccer or whatever. Play what? It doesn't matter. So let's start in, I don't know, count to fucking ten. Ten? Just count to ten. Just do it. Don't matter. Ten, nine, eight... (laughs) Seven, six, five. Don't be so excited. Four, three, two, one. We have liftoff. Hello, everyone. Oh, hang on. I'll just be one second because I'll turn off the light in the background because it looked better with it off.
Yeah, your blur is also on. Good talk. <laughs> He's a tall motherfucker, that kid. Yeah, he is. How on earth did I hear you say that? <laughs> <laughs> your blur's on. Did you want that on or no? It doesn't matter. Fucking. So we'll start in 10 seconds, so you could count that down, because I, I already started recording. So five. Ten. Nine. No, two, two now. All right. And start. <laughs> yeah, you missed it. You missed the cue. Yeah, I know. I'm waiting for these fucking dumb emojis to go off my screen. All right, there we go. And again. We, we could have had a few other goals, but he's a, we could have. He's a Whoops. deadly finisher. He's rabbit, you know. Yeah. Um. Let's let's talk about it on the pod, though. Yeah, man. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, should I just go? Can I should count down yeah. from ten. <laughs> just oh, down from oh, counting down from ten. I'm not counting down from ten. 15. 25? 33. Yes. Oh, 33, I like it. Count down from 18, Rebich's number. Eight. Oh, 25, which was how many minutes halftime took by my reckoning. God, right? No, it was. I don't know what it was like on your feed, but for mine, Tareen, like half of Torino's team was already out on the pitch ready to kick off, and the ref was fucking holding the rest of the players in the tunnel, and then he led them out. I was like, you don't have to do that. It's halftime, not the start of the game. <laughs> Even my dad, I watched the game with my dad, and he was like, what's going on here? Is this some weird rule in Italy? Normally, all the players just kind of jump. Yeah, they just come out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're always right. in the tunnel standing at each other, you know. Talking hey, let's talk hands. about this during the podcast. Hey, yeah, we have a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have a podcast? Suso, tira Alessio, Suso, tira. Por qué no tiramos? Ma por qué no tiramos? Gol! Alessio Romagnoli, gol! Alessio Romagnoli!